Secretary of State Mike Pompei and National Security Advisor John Bolton are crisscrossing the Middle East talking to allies after President Donald Trump announced the U.S. will pull troops out of northern Syria, the same part of Syria where U.S.-backed Kurdish fighters have helped fight the Islamic State. Now it seems the withdrawal of U.S. troops has conditioned and won't be so sudden after all. For more of this, we go to Na Mo Abdullah, Washington Bureau Chief for the Kurdish Network, Ruda. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a very Absolutely. complicated issue on this, so thank you for bringing some insight. National Security Advisor John Bolton is now on this great tour around the Middle East, supposedly selling Trump's plan, but it sounds like it's more John Bolton's plan on this side of it, about whether Trump's foreign policy is working or not. How's his tour going so far? Uh, I think that very well, because uh, uh, the first country he visited was Israel. Of course, he received the warmest uh, reception in Israel. That was expected. Uh, but the uh, things he said in Israel were not uh, pleasing to Turkey, which was, on his, uh, um, which was the second country for him to visit. And so as soon as he landed in Turkey, uh, uh, he was uh, notified that President Erdogan was not going to meet him. Uh, because uh, apparently he said things that uh, the Turks cannot attack the Syrian Kurds unless they do so in coordination with the United States. So uh, President Erdogan of Turkey didn't like that. So why is that such a big sticking point for President Erdogan saying, I don't need to, I don't need to have to go by your conditions whether or not you pull out of Syria. What is, what is so big about this aggression that he wants to be able to have that ability to play against the Kurds? President Erdogan sees uh, the Kurds in Syria who have been allies of the United States, actually the most effective partners uh, in the fight against the Islamic State. Uh, President Erdogan and Turkey sees them as, uh, as terrorists as an offshoot of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which has been an insurgent group fighting for autonomy in Turkey for decades. Uh, so, uh, but the United States says, no, there's a difference between these two groups. Uh, YPG, the name of the group in, in Syria, has been fighting the Islamic State, has been very effective. Um, and, um, you know, they're, um, um, uh, they're we need them, uh, not just to defeat the Islamic State, but also for, uh, if you want to have any leverage over the future of Syria because uh, like basically the United States has no other ally. The so-called Syrian opposition, Free Syrian Army, is really not that effective or you know, doesn't really exist in, in a large, doesn't have a large presence in Syria. Well, it's interesting you bring that up. So is there any good that the United States can serve in this area that no other countries around the area can serve better since they are close in proximity? Well, the uh, countries in the region, the problem is uh, you know, they have a vested interest in supporting certain groups. So the United States can... And what does that interest spawn from? Is it, is it security? Like, so, is it you know, money? Is it uh, actually, religion, faith? Religion is, I think, a more important factor, and also ethnicity. Like, you, you see, the, the, the Turks and the Kurds have, have been fighting each other for, for a long time. You have the Shia-Sunni problem when Iran intervenes in a predominantly Sunni country, which is Syria. That's problematic. The United States can be a neutral partner, you know, that can be a better player in, in Syria. That's why the Kurds welcome the United States in that region. And I, I don't think, I think more people can trust a country like the United States than they do Turkey or Iran. Uh, so be, that, that being said, I think that the, now we are back to square one in Syria between Turkey and the United States where uh, Turkey and the U.S. have different priorities. Turkey's uh, priority is not the defeat of ISIS, and, but that's basically priority number one for the United States. Turkey's number one enemy is the Kurds, not ISIS. So we are back to where we started, even though it seemed that we had reached some kind of solution when President Trump made a phone call to President Erdogan telling him that he was going to withdraw the U.S. forces. So ultimately, Turkey is always considered to be an ally of the United States. Is it truly an ally of the United States at this exact present moment? I think Turkey... Uh, we have know, bases it, there? I mean, Absolutely. We've... The United States um, seems to be needing Turkey because of the base uh, in, in Turkey. But a lot of people have raised that exact question here in the U.S. When Turkey doesn't agree with you on a lot of things, on your like on strategic issues, whether it is really uh, a worthy ally, whether it should be part of the uh, NATO. You know, this is this is a real question that's been asked here in Washington, as you know. Uh, but 
I think the United States is not ready yet to basically dump Turkey as an ally. And uh, the Kurds are not as important as Turkey for the United States. They don't even have their own country. Uh, but uh, also, like, abandoning the Kurds is not, uh, a lot of people argue, is not morally or strategically right. Because when you abandon somebody who has been fighting with you, uh, what kind of ally are you? Well, that's the thing. Well, I am glad that you were able to come today. And please come back and continue as this is going to develop throughout the next few weeks. Thanks for joining Absolutely. us, Thank Mama. you. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.